Behind every scar, there is a story of survival, and today's guest is no exception. She has quite a story of triumph, so stay right where you are, and let's begin the show. Welcome to Unscripted with me, Grace, filming here at Tradison Blue in Aboreta. Unscripted today is in honor of Christian Lagomba a celebrated musician who unfortunately succumbed to complications after brain surgery to remove a malignant tumor. Our guest today on Unscripted suffered a similar fate, but was fortunate enough to come out victorious and is here today to share her story. Hi there, welcome to Unscripted with me, Grace. It's a pleasure as always to have you here with us. Our guest is one phenomenal woman. It is a pleasure for me to meet her and hear her story firsthand. Lucy? Hi, Grace. Hi. Hi, how Thank are you? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, we are, yeah, we are grateful. And I must say, you look absolutely amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Before we share the story and people hear what you've gone through, <coughs> I just have to say you look like nothing. Nothing like like any of that. We actually, as women, I guess we don't. Uh, if if we looked, if we looked like uh, what we are carrying through. on our back or anything we've been through, that's true. I don't know what it looked like. Right? Yes, yes. you look amazing. Like this Thank short you. look on you. Thank yeah, you. It's, Thank you. It's amazing. Thank but you. But before we get into why you know that had to happen, 2019 um, bouquet, right? Bouquet. Yes, your business bouquet is is booming and doing very well after of course you met caroline and you had a conversation and everyone was like i want those products i yes. want them now yes, yes. a few months later life as you know it changes drastically mm -hmm. take us back to that moment and what happened as bookie we had a fantastic year yeah. 2019 was amazing mm -hmm. we just launched the purple tea range it was all over yeah. we were in dubai we were in kenya we were everywhere Look at that. it was hectic fortunately or unfortunately it's ground to a halt in right. December and all because of my health. What happened? I was busy running the brand. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one day I just fell sick. Mm -hmm. What did you feel? I had actually had a cough, a really bad cough. Okay. I rarely get uh, flus, okay. but I had a really bad flu mm -hmm. and for this one I had to see a doctor. I see. And nothing like... COVID-19 came to mind at that time we had at not. At the time we hadn't, <laughs> who knows, probably, that was probably it, who knows, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a really bad cough, yeah. my chest was in pain, all that, so I figured, okay, uh, for the sake of the kids, mm. I'd probably, to, it would be best to yeah. have myself checked. Yeah. So I went to a family doctor, who was uh, walking distance from my office, mm. and um First of all, as a mom, I'd put it off for some days. So on that particular date, it had been about three days of coughing and... Just waiting for it to go by itself. Exactly. Yeah. You know how what we, we normally do as do. well. Yes, uh -huh. yes. So that didn't work. So I went to the doctor. I saw him. Uh -huh. He uh, gave me medication for that. Mm -hmm. uh, recommended bed rest. But... It was that bad? I yes, guess. it was really bad. Gosh. It was really, really bad. My chest was in pain. I remember mm. I called my husband to tell him, okay, because he was out of town. Mm. Uh, I told him I was not feeling well. Okay. I really needed to see a doctor. So I was telling him mm. just in case of any, well, that's what we do. We usually I let see. each other know if one is down in case anything yes. happens. So yeah. just uh, advise me to dash to the doctor, okay. to go see the doctor, then call him back. All right. So I went, I saw the doctor. And while I was there, mm -hmm. he's a very nice, he, the doctor, our family doctor is very nice. Yeah. You, you get to chit chat with him. Uh, I always say that's how sort of an akupima <laughs> he Why? just talks to you. He doesn't talk <laughs> to you see. like a doctor. Okay. Yeah, he'll just talk to you, then he'll know exactly what's what ailing you. You know, uh -huh. he even picks up other issues that you uh -huh. probably didn't present to him All right. that way. So... As we were talking uh, about the flu mm -hmm. and the boys, the family business and all that, mm -hmm. he actually remembered I'd been on painkillers for the longest possible time. Uh -huh. And he asked me, okay, by the way, how is your, how is your headache going? Mm -hmm. So I told him, I asked him to actually prescribe something stronger because I felt paracetamol, so I'm doing the trick. Gosh. Instead he, of asking what could be 
the problem, my headache is not going. I give actually me asked pain him to give me stronger painkillers <laughs> so that I oh could my. just, you know, what we usually do is um, first aid on a gunshot exactly, to India, as we exactly. know. So I asked for stronger painkillers, mm -hmm. and of course he didn't prescribe. He told me it was, that, wa that was very, it was it's not normal. normal. The rate at which I was taking painkillers was not normal. Okay. So... Because you'd have headaches constantly. I had headaches for as long as I could remember. Mm -hmm. I was constantly on painkillers. And when not on painkillers, I'd, I'd force myself to just sleep. Really? Yes, yes, yes. This was too much to bear. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So it was too much to bear. And uh, I remember I blamed it on uh, exhaustion from work, mm -hmm. the pressure, being a mom, yeah. and all that. Okay. At some point, I um, actually thought and believed it was because after I gave birth, I yeah. had cesarean section, and I believed that was the cause of my headaches. Really? Because that was... <laughs> Imagine I'm hearing that for the first time from you. Yes, there are very can. many people who actually do believe after you get uh, CS. CS, you get issues such as uh, headaches, backaches. Yes, backaches, that happens. Yes. Oh so I had so backaches just and I had headaches, uh -huh. so I assumed, hey... I have two kids. It was bound to happen. So I'll deal with it as I go. Okay. Yeah. So on that day, what was different now with your doctor? On that particular day, mm. he opted not to give, to prescribe painkillers. Mm. What he did was, I was actually literally on my way out. So he called me back. He pulled back my, he pulled me by my hand, yeah. told me to sit down. Uh -huh. Then he checked my eye. Yeah. He checked, so I was wondering why he was checking my eye. So I thought maybe he mm. thinks the headaches were related to? Your vision. My vision. Okay. So I started thinking, does this mean I'll start wearing glasses? glasses. Yeah. It's a hassle. I don't want, I'm not, I'm start feeling old. I'm uh -huh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, um, so he checked my eyes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, what he recommended was for me to go have a scan done, mm -hmm. a CT scan. And he told me not to take any more painkillers, yeah. at least for three days. As all the other doctors should have told you by, if you're having yes. constant headaches, I'd gone to a, scan is an, a, a number of doctors and check No one had told you? No, no, no. I'd been treated for um, anemia at some point for six months. I was told the headaches were because of, uh, because I was anemic. Were low. Yes. Wow. I, I did blood tests and all that. I was I told see. it's because iron levels are low. So I, const I was constantly on iron medication. I see. Yes. You know, side if the iron medications have their own side effects. Oh my. Yes. <laughs> so now when you went, so you so were told you scheduled for a scan? Yes, yes. Okay. So I did, did a you scan. think anything of it at that point? No, I actually still thought it was related to my vision. Mm -hmm. But I still mm -hmm. called my husband and told him, okay, Dr. Dong has recommended I do a uh, scan. A I don't know what that's about, but yeah, I'll just do it. Uh, I put it off for a day, but then... Uh, I ended up doing it. So how did that go? Two days later, mm -hmm. when the results were sent to his office, mm -hmm. and I went to his office for a review. Mm -hmm. uh, by then, my husband was back in town, okay. so we went. We went together. Yeah, we went together. We sat down. Um, we tried to decipher the <laughs> the, the results. results. Yeah, but we couldn't. To just let the doctor do yes, it. Yes, 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 yes. So. Um, yeah, so he looked at it and he told, he told me, he looked mm -hmm. at me and he told me, yeah, I was right. There's something in your head. So I asked, what do you mean there's something in, 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 right. in my head? Mm -hmm. He told me there's a growth and that is what's giving you headaches. So we froze, obviously. Of yeah, we froze. We, 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 didn't, well, we literally had nothing to say at the point. Because that's point. the last thing you expected. Yeah, we expected nothing of a sort. I was sure he'd tell me my eyesight was bad. You need to go describe some. Uh -huh. Blah, 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 the usual. But no, he, he actually recommended a neurosurgeon at the earliest possible date. Yikes. That's how crazy it was. So on that same day, yeah. we tried catching the neurosurgeon that he'd recommended. Uh -huh. Because it, wasn't, uh, it was a short distance from where his office was. Uh, we didn't get to the neurosurgeon's office in time. He mm -hmm. closed. So uh, it was a Friday, I remember. And I was so stressed. Actually, I literally didn't sleep the whole weekend. I'm sure. Yeah, and, and, and my husband, I remember he told me to 
I, I kept pushing for us to go see the doctor that Saturday because mm -hmm. we'd seen the general practitioner on, on Friday. On Friday. Yeah. On Saturday, we uh, were meant to go try catch him, catch the neuro because we missed him on mm. the Friday. Did you find it? No, no. My husband actually told me not to go see him on that. He Why? Because he felt I'd be stressed. He felt it he would could be... could see you were anxious already. Yes. So he told me that's enough bad news for one day. Mm. I didn't want to, uh, Another two days will make a difference. Let's go. So you relax for the weekend. Okay. We go see him on Monday. Yes. And how were you that weekend? I was, was my nerves are all relaxed. over. Exactly. There's no relaxing. Exactly. <laughs> there's no. There's no relaxing. My, I, I was constantly on Google, oh, trying to Google is understand. The worst. Google is the worst yeah. because we'll tell you it makes in few minutes. You're about it, to it, die. Yeah, it magnifies <laughs> everything. It does. It's the worst. It interfered with how I was interacting with the boys. I remember at the time because mm. my attention. I was not, not. I was not focused. Yeah. Uh, the weekend came and went, and on Monday we went back. To, we went now in court, so we found the neurosurgeon. How did that go? Uh, for him, he didn't uh, need. We thought he'd send us for yet another scan, mm -hmm. but he didn't need to. He okay. just explained what the CT scan meant. I see. He took us through the scan. He showed us where the growth was exactly, yeah. why the headaches were there. I see. Why that was affecting my vision? It's because it was above was my right oh, eye socket. I see. That's why I kept having uh, light sensitivity issues. I remember at some point in the house, we used to fight with my husband because he'd want white light and I'd want yellow light. Oh, it and would affect I'd, you? Yes, it would affect me. I'd literally be like this in the house oh, because no. of the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how was it hearing him speak all of this in that moment? It's yeah, what are you th what, are, what is going through your mind? It, it felt like a movie actually. Right? It, it was like so, some, someone was reading your <laughs> script or something on uh, for you. Yeah. It was surreal, if I may if I may say so, yeah. Mm. It was very strange, unbelievable. And one of those things that we usually think, okay, this can't happen to me. Exactly. I live a healthy life, I don't drink, I don't party. I'm never home past six, after six, you know, I'm, I'm perfect, you know, so why would this happen, you know? I hear you. So I was wondering what, 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 what that was about, but then also what it meant. Let's take a short break. When we come back, you'll tell us what that meant. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Before the break, Lucy, you're telling us how, so you're told by the neurosurgeon, they explain what the, the growth is, what the tumor is. So tell us, what did that mean? So um, at the neuro's office, uh, he called it a meningioma. Meningioma. A meningioma. Okay. So what it is, is it's, a, it's, it's the growth, it's the cells in your brain accumulating on one spot on the membrane that covers the brain. Then when it accumulates, it forms a growth. And then this growth is what creates pressure on the different uh, sections of your brain. So it's categorized differently depending on the location. So for some it's above the eye socket. Which was that in your case? That's for my, my case. For some it's above your nose. For others it's right behind the back of your head. Uh, so it's categorized depending on where it is. And it has short and long term effects. It which does. I see. So Basically, a meningioma by itself can be harmless. You can live life not knowing you have it unless it starts showing you, giving symptoms. So you don't know how long you may have had it? I have no clue how long I possibly had it because it's a slow-growing tumor. So it's not cancerous? They could only tell that after removing it and biopsying it. It was not cancerous. So when they told you that's what you have, what was the immediate treatment? What did they have to do? I was hoping he wouldn't uh, propose surgery. I was hoping he'd tell me something like, you'll take these tablets and then you'll be fine, or we'll do this small procedure, then you'll shrink and we'll do nothing of the sort. His words were, his exact words were, we need to operate as soon as possible. Because of where it was, it was, it was risking my eyesight. Um, memory and for some I've seen I've seen some who've gotten it after me and for for them unfortunately it's resulted in a stroke so for the meningioma itself it can be harmless but depending on where it's lying 
it could be fatal. So hearing, you're going in, you think you're, you have, first of all, you have no idea what it is. You think probably it's your vision and your eyesight. Yes. The next thing you're thinking, okay, I have a growth, but I hope they can do something to make it yes. shrink. Yes. But you're told, no, actually, Lucy, you have to go into yes. surgery immediately. Immediately. What, what is running through your mind, both you and your husband at this moment? I have two boys, so what will happen to them? What if I don't come out of it? What if I do come out of it, but as a vegetable? What still happens to the boys? How is it going to be? I have to think of, I'm a businesswoman, so I have to think of the financial aspects, because it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's a, big yeah, it's a big surgery. So how will it be on our pockets? My husband and I are both, on, uh, both in business. So all, all those were the thoughts that were going through my mind at the time. But at the top of that list was the boys. Of course. The boys, yeah. How did you have this conversation with them? How did you break this news to them? Actually, once again, my husband stepped in and talked to... Uh, I have a seven-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old. For me, I could not. I could not... I didn't know where to start having that conversation with them. So he stepped in. I remember he talked to the seven-year-old. Um, he told him, Mommy has to go to hospital for a few days, but she'll be back. So in the meantime, we'll stay at Grandma's. So his mom. Was it done locally? Sorry? Was it done locally? Yes. Actually, that was the other scare because everyone kept telling us not to allow the Kenyan doctors to touch my head because I won't come out of it. Go to India, go to where, go to... And I was thinking, what guarantee is there that you'll go out, you'll spend a lot of money and come back in one piece? There's no guarantee. And at this point, the growth is already here. We don't know how much time we have. We don't know what it will go affecting because at this point I'm struggling to, to see. I'm struggling with my memory because my husband kept, would, at some point I actually thought he was playing me because he kept saying things like, hey, Lou, you keep forgetting small, small things. And I thought maybe he was taking advantage. And because <laughs> you see, when you don't know there's a problem, then you start getting paranoid. So I kept thinking, okay, maybe he's just. Your memory is affected, your short-term memory. Like yes. he would tell you something. He would tell me, or we'd agree on something and I'd completely forget. Yes. And he'd be there reminding me. So I, I kept thinking, okay, maybe he's even coming up with things. And, you know, maybe that it's not that bad. Yes. Yeah, yeah, such things. It was. Us. It was, actually. Yeah. It was, but I was losing my memory. Um, so we didn't know, again, how much time we had. So we had to Absolutely. move. Luckily, this same neuro had, uh, a neurosurgeon had um, operated on my father-in-law. My father-in-law had a clot uh, on his head. He'd operated on him. He's 70 plus years old and he was okay. Successful. Yes. So for me, I was trusted. okay. Yeah, I trusted him. I said, let's go with him. When do we need, when do we need to go in? We didn't have much time actually. I think that was a space of, all that happened within a week and a half. You're kidding me, Lucy. One week you're running your business, the other week you're in hospital. Yes. So the only people who knew what had happened were, were my family members uh, and my immediate co-workers. What did it take for preparation for, for the surgery? What is it like? It was just, it was just health as well, if I may, because it was hectic. On one hand, my mom was actually unwell at the time. She just went through eye surgery, so I was stressed about that, and I was stressed so about telling us. her <laughs> what had for. exactly, because she's also old. Yeah, yeah oh, I didn't want to stress her. I didn't want to worry her. So sh uh, we d we literally did not have time to prepare. It was the Monday uh, we went to see the neuro. By the end of the week, I think Thursday, I had to go back, go into Nairobi Hospital. Now this may seem like a frivolous question, or maybe to men they wouldn't understand, but it, if you think about it, it's still a big deal. Um, we've seen you, I think, on the interview and with the products that you do, you know, you create products for skin, for hair, for health. So you had a healthy head of hair. I did, and part I of that did. preparation was to chop it all off. Oh, that was How was that moment for you? That was so stressful. I remember before my mom went in for her eye surgery, I went with her to have my hair cut because I felt I needed <laughs> some sort of moral support. Um, 
I feel like for women, your hair speaks a lot on your personality. So I couldn't imagine myself without my big hair. But in this, at the same time, I knew my hair was was not the main would should not have been the focus or the focus. your health is what is important. Yes, yes. Yeah. but all these thoughts somehow still crossed my mind. It is. I think anything we lose is a part of us. You are allowed to grieve. Yes. You know. Yes. Um, I grieved for my hair in <laughs> my own way. <laughs> in your own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I think, I think for me, why I asked that question was that also a moment of oh my gosh, it's actually happening. Like it made it very real. It did. The haircut actually made it super real. Here you are. Yeah. Um, could be the night before or on the day rolling into the theater. What state is Lucy in? My nerves are all over. I remember uh, playing games with the doctors, telling them, uh, your medication, the an anesthetic, what yeah. is it? Yes. The, uh, anesthesia, yeah. I kept telling them, it's not working. It hurts. Maybe we do it another time. <laughs> you know, because I was thinking, what if I don't wake up? Yes. Or what if, again, I wake up, but I'm a vegetable? So that was running through your mind. Yes. And on the other hand, my, my still my boys mm -hmm. and my mom, who just had eye surgery the day before, we checked in. Yeah. So it was, it, my nerves were all over. Um, but... I think what helped also was my doctor. He's very, he was very, very nice. He, he was talking he kept, through everything. Yeah, he talked me through everything. He told me it would be okay. Uh, his main worry, his main concern was how big the scar would be. My main concern was <laughs> if I'd wake oh, up. Exactly. But for him, he was confident. He, was, he told me he'd done this uh, countless times. So it would be a walk in the park. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That helps. It, it helped a lot. Having, having that as part of your team, yes, that helps. It helped a lot. He brought in, uh, the night before, he sent in all the doctors he'd be, he'd be working with to sort of calm me down, walk me through that. Yeah, and that really helped. And the surgery took how long? Eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours. So eight, eight hours later. You it was later. You come to tell us what's that moment when you <laughs> when you wake up and you sing the the, the lights. lights in ears. I remember being woken up from theater, and later I found out it's they did that because whenever they have such a surgery, they have to make sure you're okay while you're still in the theater setup. Then they let you go back to sleep. To recovery. Yes, to recovery, uh, to HDU for recovery. So I woke up, I remember just looking at a clock that was in my room and wondering if that was 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. How time long? Had you gone in? Uh, I think I'd gone in early, 11 a.m. On, on, on Friday. No, Thursday, 11 a.m. So when I woke up, I couldn't tell if it was 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. And I didn't know it had taken eight hours. Originally, he was meant to cut across my head. But then he changed his mind and decided to just, because the tumor was on one side, he decided to just find a way around it from one side. So I think that that uh, changing around. Okay. So took See, he was very intentional in making sure he was that he the scar wasn't as For him, clearly. his worry was a scar for me. <laughs> he, he was confident about it. He said it wouldn't be um, an issue, a big issue. But tell us, how was it when you came to and when you realized that you're here? First of all, I was so grateful. Yeah. Um, I looked for familiar faces, but then in HDU, there are no visitors and all that. So I just kept uh, falling in and out of sleep. And uh, the first face I saw was my husband. What I didn't know was he'd been there a day and a night. <laughs> he hadn't gone home to change or anything. So when I saw him, I was a bit happy. I said, OK, I can recognize him, so I'm not, so I'm not badly off. I'm OK. Yeah, I'm OK. So in the days after that, the doctor would come in, try ask me questions. Do you know where you are? Do you know what happened? Do you know why? Just to make sure everything was intact. And how were you doing? You were fine? I was doing fine. I was actually able to walk. By the second day, I was walking up and oh, down. Wow. You were talking and walking? I was talking and walking. Of oh, course, I had God. a huge drainage 
uh, tube on my head. It, but you were mobile. I was mobile. Look I was mobile. That. I was eating. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I spoke to my mom on phone by the second day. She was recovering well. I told her I was doing well. And your boys, of course, I'm sure you called them as soon no, as you could. No, I, you I didn't want to. Oh. I could not. I could not. I didn't think I, I didn't feel like. You needed to be. I could handle that. Okay. <laughs> so I did not, but I spoke to their grandma who was with them. Right. Yeah, my husband's mom. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. I'd like to hear more about that why you felt you had to wait to speak to your kids and of course the recovery period so stay right there we'll be right back welcome back thank you for staying with us um lucy your story is like i can't imagine how life can change so quickly just like that huge decisions you know not small things um but we thank god you came out on the other side i have to ask um like you said i know now the sky is not what um uh, you had expected and it's, it was just on this side a smaller one and you can even hardly see it can now see it. you can hardly see it yeah but what does that scar mean to you what does it symbolize uh, for me it's 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 a second chance at this for me it's a reminder mm. that we have limited time on earth True. we need to know what's important mm. we're constantly chasing imaginary things we want this big True. life with a lot of money, what for? Because for me, when I was in bed in hospital, all that all was, that. it didn't matter. That's true. To just me, my health, my family, that was it. I realized how inconsequential, or how not important all that is. Yeah. So for me, the sky is a reminder for us to appreciate the, basically, the things that mean a lot, I, are literally not things it's mm. the time you have that's true it's, it's that's good. the experiences it's yeah. the memories yeah. it's all that the people that you love the people you love yeah. yeah for me that's that's what this car uh, symbolizes yes i love that so it give, makes you live life even more intentionally i do i, I live assume. my life intentionally yeah. i have zero apologies like what i was doing was taking paracetamols mm -hmm. constantly because I felt, I was at a point where I felt it would even be wrong for me to take a day off because I'm sick. Because I have to juggle being a mom here, business. my business on the other hand. So we really look out for number one and we need to look out for number one because without number one, then everything else falls apart around you. And how you achieve that is by looking out for number one. So you have to be at optimum health. You have to take care of yourself. Looking out for number one is very, very important. Um, like you mentioned, just taking good care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But sometimes life happens mm -hmm. and you can do all the right things. And then the unfortunate happens. Like in your case, that's what took place. Yes. Um, and I, th I guess that's purposes of sharing your story to those at home who are now wondering, hey, yeah. How will I know if this is, you know, this is this is my story or this mm -hmm. could happen to me? Mm -hmm. What can you tell them, the one who's watching? First of all, there's nothing that you can do outside what you do. Mm. And if such a thing is to happen, mm. what I recommend is for you not to beat yourself up about it. True. It's not your fault. True. It's 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 God's plan. Yeah. The best thing you can do is just take care of yourself and take each day as it comes. Live live each day as it comes yeah. yeah yeah then um from there everything somehow has a way of working itself out working have itself a bit out. of faith as well yes Sometimes listening to your bit. body is the most important thing and google no is not your friend no. google is not your friend the doctor is your friend Thanks. don't underestimate anything don't assume anything mm -hmm. your symptoms my symptoms very different. they could be different they could speak to a different condition so you always have to take care of your body. You may be eating healthy and all that, but mm. if you're suspecting, we always have a sixth sense. True. So listen to your sixth sense. Very true. Whatever it's telling you, if you feel, however minor, yeah. you, m you might feel uh, your problem might be, just, just go get checked. yourself checked. Better safe than sorry. That's true. You might be buying yourself time. You could be actually be wasting your own time by assuming and Googling mm. and consulting people who are not specialists yeah. in this, uh, uh, in, in that field. That's true. Yeah, yeah. 
That's true. And um, you had mentioned earlier short-term and long-term effects. So for you now, um, post, um, what is the healing and treatment journey and what are the long-term effects? Okay, so for me, um, the healing has been, uh, it's been, it's been, al it's also been quite hectic. Mm. It's been a year plus of medication. I see. Uh, every day? Uh, every day. Okay. Every night medication. Okay. At first I had to start with seizure, seizure medication because once they open your head. Mm. It's very sensitive. It there. is. Yeah. So uh, been on seizure medication for, okay. for the longest. Right. Uh, sleeping pills, oh, anxiety really? medication nerve really? medication because they did open this side but it affected the nerves on this side your left side on my right on my side, right side. Right side. <laughs> yes. on your right side right side yeah so uh -huh. as long as they they opened your head they have to put you on this medication so it's been mm -hmm. a year of medication and uh, and that's supposed to happen for how long or it depends on it how depends your body responds on how you're healing which is okay. why i was saying uh, a, a few minutes ago mm. If something like that happens to you, don't beat yourself down because that affects your immunity. You oh, yes. not being happy, you being yeah. stressed all the time okay. actually does affect your immunity and how you heal. Got it. So People try and stay positive. Stay eh? positive. Okay. You'll heal faster, you'll heal better. That's so true. Yeah, it won't be, so it won't be a lot. So the healing has been... Uh, uh, has in involved me doing a lot of scans the doctor's visits every now and then, right. uh, the nerve medication, which I'm still on, and uh, memory medication. That's my short-term memory. I see. Uh, I've also lost my sense of smell completely, but hopefully it will come back. Is it, so it could come back? It could yeah, come back. Yeah, because you were telling me earlier, I was like, completely. So I you can't, can't smell, smell anything. anything. <laughs> so when you're cooking... I don't know what's, <laughs> I do, it's, everything is fresh right now. Really? I know it's sprayed perfume, but I don't know what it smells like. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And how is this playing out in your business? Because your business actually is... actually stressful because my business requires me to have all my senses working exactly. together. And in terms of cooking, you know your sense of taste and smell are actually connected. Together. Yes. So my taste is at 50% where mm. I have to really spice my food I to see. pick to up, taste. to taste. Otherwise, I just eat because I'm hungry. I see. Uh, there are foods that you, s you literally start eating with your nose, like chapati, mm. uh, fries, amakikus, <laughs> like <laughs> what? <laughs> together. Yes. Uh, there are food, pilau. Yeah, there are foods you literally... That. You need coffee. The, yes. Coffee wakes you up with the aroma. Yeah, exactly. So you don't appreciate those things anymore. You just eat and drink because you're hungry or you need to have breakfast or lunch or whatever it is. No way. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's small things that we take for granted. Imagine. And now that I don't have it, mm. I understand how important it is. So I'm always telling people, don't, don't, don't play around with your body. Don't. It's, it's, it really is a temple. It's, we should be, it's something we should be grateful for. That's this so not having a sense of smell, it's, it's, it's just taken me backwards mm -hmm. because for my formulations, I need my senses. So yeah. now I'll have to figure it out moving forward if the sense of smell doesn't come back. I see. Yeah. How to incorporate your How new incorporate reality yes. into your business. Yes. Because wow. you cannot hire a, hire a nose. You, <laughs> you definitely cannot. Yes. So I guess big picture, how has life as you know it changed now for Lucy? Uh, um, I, I actually literally do like the life, my new... Uh, the second chance I've been given. Yeah, that's good. I do. That's great. I do. It it comes with a lot of medication, yes, <laughs> and <laughs> all that. But yeah. I do like it because Myself. now I value it. I'll say I value it. And the things I felt were important, the cars, the mm. travel life, the, all that. And I really don't care about that stuff. Okay. And I feel like I'm more of a mom now to my boys than ever. Yeah. In this, You're more in present. This, yeah, I'm more present. I literally do not carry work at home Good. intentionally. I do not care what it is. When I'm home, I'm You're their home. mom. When I'm at work, I'm, focus on. I'm Lucy of Buki. So you, you're more present in the now? I am. Like I'm, I'm at the office now? I'll do my I'm, work. I'm, I'm at in the home. office. I'm here. I'll do I this. I'll do, my, I'll do the best I can. Okay. I'm alive today, so I'll make, I'll, I always try and make each day count. I love that. Yes. And how did your kids respond to the new mommy? Mommy with different uh, hair, mommy, 
you know, you know this, this new mom? How did that play, oh my play goodness. out? Um, okay, for the seven year old, I remember when, 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 when uh, I was driven in from the hospital, yeah. he looked at my head and looked at the scar and he went like, oh, what happened to your hair? Then he ran away and played. <laughs> the little one now? The, the older one? The older oh. one. Okay. The two-year-old, he was one at the time. He kept, he just kept staring. Because you can notice something is different. There's something very different. And he was actually off for about two weeks. He took a while to warm up to me. Oh, and it was really yeah. heartbreaking at first. I can imagine. But then I had to understand he's a baby. Yeah. I went away, you know, for kids also, when you go away for so long yeah. and you come back, they kinda, they're kind of mad at you for leaving That's them. That's true. And then they've come back, uh, you've come back, you're different. Yeah. So they're trying to understand what's going on, what is happening, what's yeah. not happening, yeah. like that. Yeah. But Look over that. time, it's like for them, nothing has happened, but it helps that my husband talks to them every now and then. Okay. Because that uh, in the beginning, I had to struggle with, I struggled with things like um, temper. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the surgery also. And uh, the anxiety I kept feeling at the time. Yeah. So I had a very short temper. Very short temper. I kept getting, I was very irritable. Yeah. I kept snapping. Mm. I think sometimes I still do. Okay. But now it helps that I am aware, I'm conscious. I know I what's see. happening. So I know when to take five step minutes back. take a step back okay yeah take some time off then come back and deal um i like you to speak on support system and the impo importance of that and what gave you strength during that journey it's um these are the small small things again that we take for granted mm. your support system the people around you mm. very important mm. this is how this is what will what will determine how fast you heal if you have, like, I will say I am blessed. I have very good, uh, I have a very good family. That's the nuclear and extended, both okay. sides. Okay. My in-laws are very hands-on with the boys. Okay. My mom, they're all around, they're always around to present. support. For, they've been present for the longest, for Great. the last uh, year plus. Great. And I am so grateful for that because I couldn't have imagined it. Any other, Any other way. way. I don't even know what that would have looked like, like if I didn't have that. Yeah. Yeah. And your business as well? Yours. My business as well. For my business, I'm your thankful colleagues. for the team I had because exactly. I was busy getting stressed getting into hospital. When I got into hospital, mm. the, when I checked into hospital, wondering how my business would be. Yeah. But I have two girls in particular who really held forth. Okay. They ran the business, nothing went amiss. Oh, good. And they took up roles that weren't theirs, mm -hmm. Faith and Sharon. They took up roles that were not theirs and they just ran with it. And it was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. God. Yeah. Thank Support God. system is very important. You have to, which brings me back to now how we live our current lives. The circle we create right now, you can try imagine it. Mm. Try imagine a point when you're really low in your life mm. and you're really down. Are those the people who you can count on? You can count on. That's how I look at it. So my circle is very small, very, very small. Good job. And unapologetically so. Fantastic. You have it it's it it matters. It does. Yeah. Who you surround you. yourself with matters. Thank you for that. That's a perfect way to end the show. Your your okay. circle has to be one that is yeah. It's a fundamental. You have to be very sure that you can trust your it circle. It has to be solid. Yes. The it circle has, to, has be to, solid. to be solid. It does not have to be big. Just make sure it's solid. It's solid. Yeah. So take that home with you today. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Like I said, I love this look. This Thank looks you. amazing on you. Thank you. Um, but we are even more happy and glad that inward you're doing well and you're healing well. We wish yeah. you all the very best. Thank you very much. Um, to you and your family and the business, may you just continue to thrive and grow Thank in this you. new season. Thank and you. to those watching at home who may have an experience that, like we said, life happens and you don't know what to do or where to begin. I hope her story has encouraged you um, that you can also be a survivor and come out on the other side and be here to share your story. Thank you for making time for us. Special thanks to Radisson for hosting us. Until next week, goodbye and God bless.